I had a cellmate who was an axe. He killed a man with an axe handle on an Air Force base. Good dude. I know you're saying, what do you mean, good dude? Good dude. I trusted him. Hi, I'm Larry Lawton, America's biggest jewel thief. Join me as I walk you through my past robberies, how I planned them, executed them, and ultimately got caught. I'm going to show you how we did things in prison, like making a tattoo gun, making wine, making white lightning. It's going to be very educational. These are the untold stories. Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here again for another great edition of Untold Stories. And this is going to be a good one. This is called the 10 Unwritten Rules You Need to Know About Prison. Before I get started again, check out our member programs. Check out our Instagram, Facebook. Please check out our merch, whatever you can do. Don't forget to subscribe. And please tell a friend. We're really trying to build this thing for a lot of good reasons. And the main reason is to build up a prison reform group that's going to be making changes into a system we all know is broke. So let me get into this next uh, thing I wanted to tell you guys about. It's called the 10 Unwritten Rules. And it's about prison. Because if you didn't know these, one, you could lose your life, get stabbed, have a really rough time. I get called all the time about people who made mistakes. They will be going to prison. And it all, of course, depends on what level prison you're going to. But let me get right into the unwritten rules because they're important things you would need to know if you went to prison. The first thing you do, obviously, when you go into prison, don't believe anybody there is your buddy. But the first unwritten rule is to look at what people are wearing on their feet. And you're saying to me, what are you talking about, Larry? Here's exactly what I'm talking about. When I was transferred, and I was transferred a lot because I was a, I guess you would just call me a troubled inmate. A convict who didn't care would fight the system. They gave me diesel therapy. They did a lot of things to me to make my life rough in prison. Well, they transfer you. Obviously, I ended up having a very good reputation in prison. So I was a convict and people knew me. And you go from one place to another. You're into what they call con air, the air transport, which I'll be doing a video on. But anyway, as far as the 10 unwritten rules, that first rule is what are people wearing? And here's why it's important. If I go into a prison and I come on the yard, I got my bed roll, I'm getting assigned to one of the units, you walk into the unit, you see people milling around all the time. They could be up on the tiers looking down at you. It's kind of intimidating if you don't understand what's going on. They're sizing you up, seeing who you are, seeing what kind of guy, how you carry yourself. Are you meek? Are you aggressive? Are you tough? Are you, uh, the way you walk, the way you look at people, the way you don't stare them down, but you don't look away. It's, there's, there's an art to all of that. Well, the first thing I do is look at what they're wearing. Here's why. If I see people wearing flip-flops, I'm looking, this isn't, it's not ready to jump off. If you see people wearing boots, they're, they're issued boots. The prison issues boots. If you see people wearing their boots, why are they all wearing their boots? If you see people in sneakers and boots and stuff like that, you're saying to yourself, what's going on here? Usually when people are wearing stuff like that, you know, especially like if you're in the unit and you come in later in the night or sometimes you'll come in after chow, they'll release you from R&D, depending on what time they release you. When you get to that unit, if you see people with sneakers milling around, you can feel it. You can feel tension. Something might jump off. You're not involved. I'm not saying don't get involved and don't get involved, but something might jump off. So you better be on your P's and Q's. You better be ready at all times to step back, get out of the way, watch two guys go at it. You don't try to break stuff up. You just back away. It's not your beef. You just are a convict. You're looking at them. But you better know that. Now, if I see people just joking around and they're walking around in flip-flops and stuff, they just got out of their shower and it's like it's like old home week here, this place is not going to scare me too much. It's okay. It's a prison. Things can happen. But okay, there's not a tension-filled place. You'll know tension right away in a prison. Absolutely right away you'll know it. And boy, I get that feeling to this day no matter what I do. I can feel tension all the time. It's just what I am. 
The second thing you want to know in the unwritten rules, what's the shower situation? Listen, I like to be clean. I don't ever want to be a dirty person. You don't want to be a dirty person in prison. You know, the worst thing you can do is be a dude that smells, doesn't clean up after himself, and be with a celly. I once took a dude's face and grabbed him by the back of his hair and smashed his face into a concrete wall. Blood started pouring all over the place. He just falls down. And I did that because after two times, he used to shave. We all shave. And, you know, they have the sink and the toilet together. You know, here's a picture right here. And in that, you better clean up after yourself. If you brush your teeth, you don't leave toothpaste in the bottom of that. You shave, you don't leave your shavings, you know, the, the hairs in there. Whatever it is, you clean that out. Just like you take your toilet. You know, you got a, a single unit. As you can see in the picture, it's the single units. When you go down, you use that toilet. You clean that. You take a piss. You take toilet paper and you clean that that toilet, that, that seat cover. There's no seat cover. You're sitting on stainless steel. But you want to be seeing piss stuff on that? Somebody, if I, if I got a selling and he walks in and, you know, let's say they assign someone. Usually you don't let that happen, depending on the place you're at. They get a guy and he comes in your cell and, you know, he says, hi, how you doing? Hey, well, what's up? I'll know within five minutes what kind of dude this dude is. Is he a convict or is he a newbie? You know, is he scared so he don't know how to act and way he handles himself right around that toilet area and, and stuff, I'm going to know what kind of guy he is. And I want to know what kind of guy he is because I'm going to know what I'm dealing with. The guy that I smashed, I didn't just smash him. I told him a few times, I said, listen, man, clean up, man. We eat, we get water out of that sink. You know, we fill up our bowls and, you know, you put water in there and you might get that water for uh, your rice and then you're going to put your rice in the microwave. Or you're gonna make hot water. You're gonna, you know, you take the water out of that. And you go boil it in the in the microwave for coffee in the morning. Listen, you clean up after yourself. That's important. But you want to know the second rule is the shower situation. What's it like? Where do they go? Whose shower is who? So when you're going in that unit, you want to know the shower situation. What I mean by that is. They had three showers on each, six showers on each side of the unit. And the top left was where the white dudes used to go. That was kind of their shower. Another shower is where the Hispanics go. Another shower is where the blacks go. Another shower is maybe where you, you know, shit's going on. Like we used to make wine in one. So a lot of times guys couldn't take a shower because we were literally cooking wine and we made the wine out of that shower. So it's important to know the shower situation. And you don't just walk around like, obviously, when I say watch the shower situation, you gotta watch for a minute. When you see two people go to the shower or a person go to the shower, or they go in with their bag and a towel, just not giving a crap and it's okay, there's no tension, or, or they walk into that shower with their boots on and their friends with them. And then you'll see their friend just stand on the rail, you know, outside the shower, just looking around, watching, you know, seeing what's coming. Because his friend might see two dudes coming up, maybe trying to hit that guy. Maybe that guy's got, you know, something wrong, something happened. And his friend is going to, hey, bang on that door and say, man, get, and the guy puts his boots on. And he gets his shank and he's ready to go. I don't care if his weenie's hanging out. Doesn't mean anything. He's got his shank and he's got his boots. Because you sure don't want to be left with your dick hanging in your hand if they're coming after you with a, uh, a shank. So it's important to know the shower situation. Watch it. If you see, uh, you'll feel it. You'll see how people are reacting, what times they shower. You'll get to get an idea of how the groove goes. Are the showers even open in a day? Sometimes they're not. Who's cleaning the showers? It's the orderlies in the unit, but you don't want to just disrespect the dude and just go in while he just did something and he didn't get it inspected by the CO. He's going to look at you like, who's this dude? You want to know the shower situation. It's important. The next rule you want to know is the TV rules. What's going on in the TV rooms? In Atlanta, we had four TV rooms. We had a black TV room, 
a Spanish TV room, a white TV room, and a sports TV room. Everybody hung out. Now, that does not mean Larry can't go to the black TV room. He's not going to. He's not going to sit in there and take a spot from somebody in that room that's going in there all the time. Vice versa. The black guys don't come into the white guy's room. Now, are we friends? You come on in. Hey, la, you know, uh, what's going on? I need to speak to you for a sec. Sure, you know, come on in for a sec. You know, what's going on? Hey, hey, you know, you're running the football tickets, and, and I had a winner, man. Look at the game. Look at the ticket. It's guaranteed. You can see I didn't mess something up. You can talk to them. It's not like you can't meet people or talk to people in TV rooms, but you see which TV room is yours or with your race. They could say, oh, there's no race going on in prison. There is. Depending on the prison you're in, the prison actually promotes it, as sad as that is. Because they rather have the blacks fighting the whites or the Hispanics fighting the blacks. So they're not worried about themselves, the prison. They actually, trust me, they don't like that in their own way. The fourth is politics. What's the prison politics? When I went into Atlanta, you know, I hated the mob politics. I call it the mob politics and the mafia stuff. Oh, you get these old timers. Hey, you shouldn't talk to him. Wait, man, that guy's no good. You better be careful with it. As much as you might not like it, you got to know it. You got to know who's the guy to go to. You got to know who the shot caller is in each group. Uh, the black guy's got a shot caller. The Hispanics got a shot caller. The Indians got a shot caller. The white guy's got a shot caller. Those are the guys you go to if you have a big beef with someone before you do something on your own. They might say, wait, let's talk to this shot caller. And they might say, hey, listen, hit him. Do what you want. Stab him up. Do what you're going to do. It's, you know, he's, he's open. Do what you want. The fifth, chow hall seating. You think what? You're going to hook up with somebody. And then you got to know, again, the chow hall, what side to go to. Because usually there's two sides. Uh, where is your seating area, give or take? I watched a man get killed for sitting in the wrong section. Killed for sitting in the wrong section. Uh, obviously, people don't just come up and stab you if that happens. But you might think they're trying to intimidate you and you try to get buck up and say, man, who are you? You know, you, before you know it, you're in a situation over sitting in the wrong seat. And when I say wrong seat, maybe the shot caller sits in that spot every day at 12 o'clock. Why would you start trouble by sitting in that seat like you're a badass? You don't test them like that. This isn't the county jail where you got to hit somebody and make it known that you're, a, you know, you're not going to be pushed over. This is prison. This is where you're going to live for the next X amount of years. And you want to survive it. Depending on where it is, you want to survive it. Next is the commissary. The commissary is the store of a prison. And let me tell you why, how important a commissary store is. You go to commissary every week. You have a certain day of the week to go to that store by your number. My number was 522240004. So 224, mine would be last four. They might say all even numbers go on Tuesdays, all odd numbers go on Wednesday, or whatever system that prison has set up. You got to know the commissary. In Atlanta, when I went to Atlanta, Atlanta was so well, you would get robbed coming from commissary because there was what they call a blind area. So people would literally get robbed. Like is it like it's a shakedown or a robbery. You got to know what kind of place it is and who to go with. And hey, you got to get to know the right people that you're not a pushover. You're not going to give your shit up. What are the items that are hot in this prison? You know, certain things are, are needed. And then... That goes into the next rule. You got to know who the store men are. And you go, what do you mean? What's a store man? A store man is a guy in prison who runs a literally a store and he'll charge two for three. So if you borrow two soups from him, you got to give him three stoop soups back during, on his commissary day. If you borrow a bar of soup, soap, you might have to give him two bars of soap when you come back. Or he'll give you two and you got to give him three bars of soap. You can buy pretty much anything off a store man. Some of the store men sell actual sandwiches. They'll sell drugs, of course. Some, some sell anything from sex to drugs to whatever. But the store man usually sells items that are on the commissary. And that dude 
wants his shit back. And if you don't pay him, you're going to get stabbed. Trust me, you will get stabbed. And it's important to know who's the good dudes, who's solid, who you could talk to, who if you had an issue, your money didn't come, the guy's not going to really get offended because it was a legit thing. You know, people aren't assholes in there. You know, they want their money. They lent you something. You give it back. You want to borrow a book of stamps. You got to give them a book and a half back because that's how the money is in prison. Stamps. You got to understand what the money is in prison. The most unwritten rule when I was in, and it has changed a little, but it, not totally, is who's your cellmate? Trust me, who's your cellmate? I had a cellmate who was an axe. He killed a man with an axe handle on an Air Force base. Good dude. I know you're saying, what do you mean, good dude? Good dude. I trusted him. You got to know your celly, because there was a celly there, a guy who stabbed his celly in the chest, killed him, put a shank right in his chest, and went back to bed. You better know. Unwritten rule, you got to be able to read people and get that celly that's normal. Because trust me, it's worth you bucking it and going to the hole and fighting than getting into a cell with the wrong guy. Because how would you like to be locked down with a guy who is a psychopath and at 10 o'clock at night when the doors are locked and there's really no guards around, even in the units. You could be dying in that unit. They don't give a shit. This guy kills you because he's a violent psychopath. You got to feel that out. You got to know the couple of dudes. You got to rap with people. You got to know how to speak. Understanding how to talk to people is probably the best skill you could have. Number nine, very good important rule. Who's the snitches in that place? Trust me, there's snitches in all prisons. You'll see them, the little freaking weasels. They're up near the guard talking like they're little, like little buddies and stuff, and you look at them, and who's this asshole? You gotta watch who the snitches are, and they have what they call note droppers, or dry snitchers, you know, people who will do it sneakily, sneak a note under the counselor's door, hand a note out at night, and they put it in the mailbox, and then the guards check the mail every night when they get it out, and they see a note, you know, Lawton's got a shank in his cell. That's how you get people shaken down, and people... You got to kind of know who they are. You can watch the prison for a little bit and figure out who's the stand-up guys, who's the convicts. That is super important. And finally, a very important unwritten rule in prison is the yard. You want your rec. You want to get out there and you want to have rec. You want to play handball. You want to play basketball. You want to work out. You want to go do pull-ups and dips and you want to walk the track, feel fresh air, get sun on your face. You got to know the yard rules. In prison, you'll see different groups in different sections of a yard. You could feel tension on a yard right away and you'll see something jump off. And in a penitentiary though, they will shoot down on that yard with the gun towers that are around that yard and they will fire down on that yard Man, when they say get down on the yard, boom, you drop. Because they will shoot you. They have bean bags, they have rubber bullets, they have other things, but they also have live ammo. So they will shoot you. Uh, I've seen them shoot down on a yard, man. I'm telling you, you don't know if it's you next. You sit there, man. You still as you can believe. But knowing the yard rules is when you go there, you're going to see a lot of things on a yard. Dude sharpening shanks along a concrete, uh, along a fence line, and they're leaning against the fence, and they're sharpening the shank. They're just sharpening and sharpening and sharpening. What do you think? You look at them, and they don't want to know that you're even looking at them. You're going to see drug deals go down. You're going to see punks getting fucked in the corner sometimes. You're going to see crazy stuff go down on a yard. But you got to know the yard rules. Where do you go? Who do you see? You need something. Who's the who's kind of running the yard? Where are the guards stationed on the yard? You know, there's usually the guards in the tower. You can check them out. You can't see, but you can blind them. But there might be guards on the yard. There usually is. You'll see them walk around. You know, something. And you got to know. You got to have that feel. You got to know the yard rules. If you want wreck, and you sure want wreck, believe me, you want to get out of that hole. When you're in that hole and you're waiting to get on the compound, they call it, you're going to want to get out in fresh air, get sun on that body, 
telling you. And you're going to want to connect with the right people. And that's where you do it on the yard. Listen, guys, I don't want you in prison. But if you got to go, I want you to survive. And no matter what it is, be respectful of others in life and in prison. Just because you go to prison doesn't mean you respect people. In fact, you respect them more. The dude you disrespect just might kill you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Check out our merch below. Please sign up, uh, subscribe to our channel, pass the word. You know that always helps. Thanks for your support, everybody. I really mean it. It means a lot. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Have a great one.